Hey everyone, and welcome to our deep dive. We're going to be talking about something I know you're super curious about. Mm -hmm. The science behind skincare and beauty products. It's a good one. I know you want to know what really goes into making those magical creams and serums that promise, you know, yeah. the world. Glowing skin. Exactly. Younger looking skin. So we're going to break it all down for you today. Yeah. From the lab all the way to your bathroom shelf. It's a journey. So you know. Absolutely. It all starts in the lab. Right? It does. It all starts in the lab with scientists and chemists. Like the real wizards. They're the real wizards behind the beauty. Yeah. They take these raw materials, uh -huh. these ingredients, and they use the magic of chemistry to transform them into these incredible products. So let's talk ingredients. Okay. How do they even decide what goes into a product? Well, it's all about efficacy, okay, safety, and synergy. Hmm. So they're looking for ingredients that are going to deliver the results they're promising, but also ingredients that are safe for your skin and ingredients that work well together. So are they like reading tons of research papers? They do. They spend hours and hours poring over clinical studies, research papers. Wow. Looking at the latest scientific discoveries. Okay. They also do a lot of testing, mm -hmm. you know, in vitro testing on cells and tissues. Well, like in a Petri dish. Exactly. And, you know, they have to be very mindful of ethical considerations like animal testing. Right. So a lot of companies are moving away from animal testing and finding alternative methods. Yeah. Oh, well, definitely. And the source of the ingredients matters, too. How so? Well, you know, you can get the same ingredient from different sources, and no. the quality and purity can really vary. Oh, interesting. Like, for example, hyaluronic acid. Uh. That's a really popular ingredient in skincare. It's a humectant, which means it draws moisture to the skin. Mm. But did you know that hyaluronic acid can be derived from rooster combs? No. What? I know it sounds strange. That's why, I'll... but nowadays, most hyaluronic acid is produced through biofermentation. Okay, well, that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. But still rooster comes. I know. Okay, so once they have all those ingredients figured out, yep. what happens next? Like, how do they actually make the product? So that's where the formulation comes in. Okay. This is where the scientists become a bit like chefs. Okay. They're mixing and matching different ingredients right. to create the desired texture, the absorption, the overall feel of the product. Yeah. It's a very precise process. So, like, what kind of things are they adding in besides the main ingredients? Well, they use carriers like water or oil to help deliver the active ingredients to your skin. Okay. Emulsifiers to blend ingredients that wouldn't normally mix together, like oil and water. Right. Preservatives to prevent bacteria and mold from growing in the product. That's super important. Absolutely. And then stabilizers to keep the formula stable over time. Mm -hmm. Thickeners to adjust the viscosity. And sometimes even fragrances and colors to enhance the sensory experience. So like that creamy moisturizer I'm obsessed with? Yeah. That has to be like a whole bunch of different things coming together. It is. It's a delicate balance of ingredients. Wow. And emulsifiers play a key role in getting that smooth, creamy texture. It's kind of blowing my mind how much goes into this. I know. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so they've got their formula down. Yeah. What happens then? Then comes the testing. Of course. And this is a crucial part of the process because they're not just testing to make sure the product feels nice. Uh -huh. They're testing for safety and efficacy. Makes sense. So there are different types of testing, okay. stability testing, where they subject the product to different temperatures, light conditions, yeah. to make sure that it doesn't break down or separate over time. You wouldn't want it to like go bad after a week exactly. in your cabinet. They also do microbiological testing to make sure the product is free from harmful bacteria or fungi. So it's safe to use. Exactly. Yeah. And then there's irritancy testing where they use cell cultures or even patch tests on volunteers mm -hmm. to identify any potential allergens or irritants. That's so important. It is. Especially for people with sensitive skin. Absolutely. So they're testing like the science part of it. Yeah. But do they also test like how it actually feels on your skin? They do. There's a whole field called sensory evaluation. Okay. And this is where trained experts assess the product's texture, its fragrance, mm. the overall feel on the skin. So it's not just about being safe and effective, but it also has to be like nice to use. Exactly. It's got to feel good. Okay. So they've done all their testing. Yeah. They've got this amazing product. Yep. How does it go from the lab to like mass production? That's a great question. Yeah. So that's where the manufacturing process comes in. Okay. And it's a whole other world. I bet. They have to take that small batch formula from the lab uh -huh. and scale it up to produce thousands and thousands of units. 
It's not just like mixing it in a bigger bowl, right? No, it's not that simple. Okay. They need specialized equipment. Uh huh. Huge vats mixers. Wow. Filling machines, labeling machines. Oh my gosh. And the quality control is incredibly stringent throughout the entire process. So every bottle is like the same. Exactly. They want to make sure that every bottle meets the exact specifications that were developed in the lab. That's pretty impressive. It is. So they're making all these products, and then, of course, it's got to get into the packaging. Yes, the packaging is important, too. Yeah. It has to protect the product, right. preserve its integrity, mm -hmm. but it also has to be appealing to the consumer. Right. It's got to stand out on the shelf. It's all about marketing. It is. But the label is super important, too, right? Absolutely. The label is not just there for decoration. Okay. It contains a lot of important information Yeah. about the ingredients, the usage instructions, safety precautions, mm -hmm. and all of this is regulated okay. to ensure transparency and accuracy. So it's like a little instruction manual. It is a little instruction manual for your product. Yeah. And it's really important to pay attention to it, to make yeah. sure you're using the product correctly. So basically, it's like a super long journey. It is. From the lab to the factory. Yep. And then finally into our hands. Exactly. But for certain products, yeah. like ones that claim to reduce wrinkles or fade dark spots, mm -hmm. they have to do even more testing, right? They do. They often conduct clinical trials, okay. which involve volunteers using the product under controlled conditions, uh -huh. and then they collect data yeah. to see how effective the product really is. So it's basically like, Research never really stops. It doesn't. New discoveries are being made all the time. It's that. New technologies are being developed. Absolutely. So who knows what the future of skincare holds? Yeah. It's so exciting. It is. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a lot more informed. Me too. About my skincare. It's amazing to think about all the science and all the people that go into making these products that we use every single day. It really is a collaborative effort. So the next time you're putting on your serum or your moisturizer, yes. think about everything that went into it. Think about that journey. It's pretty incredible. It is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Thanks for having me. And until next time, keep on exploring.